people come to Shangri-La's Fijian Resort because of the environment. And if the environment degenerates or we don't take care of the environment, obviously that will certainly have a negative impact on their experience. Most of the resorts in Fiji treat the sewage, but then they release it. <laughs> so to release nutrient-rich water, whether from the laundry or whether from the treated sewage, to release it back into the environment is a bad idea because it, it causes just as much environmental damage. To become a better neighbour to the villages around it, the resort has had to change the way it treats its waste. The solution was to construct artificial wetlands. The idea and design came from the Foundation for the Peoples of the South Pacific, a local NGO. This wetland project is the first fruit of a unique partnership between the resort, local villages, FSP and government. The project is designed to address the hotel's negative impact on the surrounding reefs and change the way people think about managing waste water. This is an artificial wetlands treatment system whereby plants are being used to treat our wastewater to, to a higher quality. Plants consume nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates so naturally. The water hyacinth is the most common plant in the wetlands. Our water hyacinth is used for handicraft and there's other species in there such as kuta which is used to prepare kuta mats. These are prized mats and very hard to find today. This wetland system basically consists of three lakes. The wastewater from the sewage treatment is pumped to the first lake and water flows naturally under the influence of gravity into the second and from the second into the third. It's known to remove nutrients of up to 75%. As secretary of the Duvu District Environment Committee, Nepote Senekal has supported the FSP initiatives from the beginning, working to avert the destruction of the reef at his doorstep and to develop a clean and reliable water supply system for their village. The population is growing. There are more children in the village now, and Nepote knows they must act to protect their future. The sea and the land, they are actually connected, and uh, most of the things that we do in the land will affect the way of life out there in the sea. And we find out that most of the problems that are causing the depletion of our marine resources are land-based. The problems of the reef start from the hills above the coast. Heavy rains wash the soil laced with chemical fertilizers into rivers and down into the sea. Forests were cleared to make way for the vast sugarcane farms developed during British rule. Sugarcane has been an important sector of Fiji's economy ever since. Most of the soil that we have in our farms are going out into the sea if we don't uh, follow up on the rules and regulations the government has given us and uh, plant a lot more bigger trees on the riverside so that they'll be able to, to hold the soil. To reduce soil erosion, villagers are planting trees on the slopes of the watershed above the coral coast. FSP call their program From Ridge to Reef. Communities are encouraged to take a comprehensive approach to managing their environment. The objective? Save the reef and protect village water sources. The damage already done to the reef has reached a critical point. Teams of volunteers from the coastal villages are working to restore the corals and bring back the fish on which much of their livelihood depends. Today they're removing an infestation of crown of thorn starfish which are killing the coral, or lassi. They kill all the lassi here. Here, the lassi. They kill this one. You can see the coral is dead here, the white part, and the brown part still alive. So this coral can't grow any higher. So these corals are all in the process of dying. So what I'm going to try to do is take this off and we'll plant these on the fish houses. Proper tools always help, but I forgot my hammer. So this is my hammer. <laughs> here it goes. So everything I take here is saving its life. And so what we're doing is we're rescuing these corals, and we're planting them in deeper water. And we're trying to uh, segregate them according to species, so that when they spawn, the sperm cells and egg cells will find each other and the genes are reinforced. It's allowing the reef to give it a little bit of help so that the natural process of adapting to higher temperatures can occur. We're giving fish habitat by creating these fish houses. So we get uh, more fish, more clams, more corals, and the tourists are very excited because it's just so beautiful. Villagers are also replanting the once abundant mangrove trees which protect the reef. The coastal communities of Duvu Tikina are seeking a new balance. Working together with other stakeholders, they are changing the way they interact with the environment.
to better manage their water resources and save the reef which provides food and livelihood for the people and protection for the island from the growing perils of climate change.